Welcome to Good Spirit Graphics. In this tutorial, we'll continue working with splines. We're going to use the track and roto we created in Mocha for part one of this tutorial. And in Cinema 4D, we'll combine the track and roto using the camera map editor to create an animated camera map of the hand moving in 3D space. Okay, let's get started. This tutorial contains the following sections. Moving roto layers in the camera map editor. Animating roto layer positions. Adding depth to roto layers. And adding rotation to roto layers. Now normally when you're working with splines in Mocha, you don't export just one layer to Mocha Blend, you have multiple splines. And trying to move these around in 3D space using the Project Splines button is rather cumbersome. So Mocha Blend includes an editor window called the Camera Map Editor. So let's go ahead and just delete what we have here. And we'll start over with a new spline. And if we move out of the camera view, you'll see it is positioned right on our movie screen background. Now let's open the Camera Map Editor. On the left side is the Layers panel. This shows you all the layers you've exported from Mocha and created here in Mocha Blend. We only have one in this example. On the top, we have a toolbar for manipulating our spline and setting the visibility of various objects in here. And then we have the camera view and movie screen profile view here. This is equivalent to a left camera view in Cinema 4D. You can see we have our camera here, our movie screen here, and our roto layer is directly on our movie screen. Now, if we move down a little bit, and go ahead and rotate around, you'll see what we're basically looking at is this view right here. Now, if we want to move our spline away from our movie screen, all we do is grab the spline layer here and drag it out this way. As soon as we move it, you'll see that we have a flag pop up in front of our layer name here. That is a modified flag that tells you that layer has been changed. To update it, all we do is click on either Update Selected the selected layers are shown in white like this, or you can click on Update Modified. Click on Update Modified in this case, and you'll see our spline has now moved into 3D space here. Again, if we look through the camera and turn on our movie screen background, you'll see it lines up perfectly with our footage. We'll just um, let's move it behind our background, actually, so you can see a little more carefully how that works. I'm going to mouse scroll in here and change the zoom level of our profile view, and then just drag it over. We'll go ahead and drag our roto layer and move it behind our movie screen. Let's move out of camera view so you can see what's going to happen here, and click on Update Modified. Now it's going to jump back here, and we'll put our movie screen back where it belongs, right on the rig, and you'll see it's now behind the rig. Now if we look through our movie screen and turn our movie screen on and off, you'll see our fingers are lined up perfectly. No matter where you place it, it's always going to match up pixel perfect with your original roto work in Mocha. Now, we can move our layer back here, and we'll zoom out a little bit and just line this up. There's an easier way to line up your zoom here so everything fits. That is to use this alignment button here. There we go. Now, also in our profile view, we have some tools for aligning our layers. These gizmos here, the left gizmo and the right gizmo, allow you to position your layers exactly where you want them. These buttons here control moving the alignment tools where you want and moving the layers to them. So the first button here is going to move the alignment tool to the left margin. The next one will move it to the movie screen. And also, if you want to move it to a, a particular spot so you can position your layer right where you want, you can go ahead and click on the numeric position indicator here and position it right where you want. So let's put minus 100 here and you'll see it has positioned it towards the camera in front of the movie screen. Negative numbers move towards the camera, zero is right on the movie screen and positive numbers move behind the movie screen. So now if we want to move our layer directly right on this spot, we just go up here and click on this button here, align selected layers to red guide. Now our layer is exactly on the minus 100 pixel point. 
Now what if we want to animate the movement of our spline in camera Z depth here? We have a couple of ways to do that. First, let's get out of camera view here so we can see what's going on. We didn't update our spline position and let's go ahead and reset it while we're at it anyway. Let's take our guide, put it back to the movie screen and then align our layer to the guide. Now, if you don't see a tooltip popping up there, that's due to the screen capture software. But when I hover over buttons, you will also see the tooltip pop up down here in the Cinema 4D interface. So here, this says align selected layers to red guide. Let's go ahead and put it back there and we'll click on update modified. That should move it right back to this spot on the movie screen. There we go. Now, if we want to animate it in Z depth here, all we do is add a keyframe here. You see it pops up right here on frame one. Then we can move our frame indicator to a different frame. Let's say frame 100. We can grab our layer, move it to another spot. Go ahead and set another keyframe at this spot. And then you see if we move back and forth, our layer is now animated in camera Z depth. You get the option of setting your keyframe type here to linear or ease. And if we click on play here, you'll see it's going to move in camera Z depth between those two keyframes and then stop on frame 100. Now let's go ahead and click on update modified, see what happens in the 3D view. Now in the 3D view, it's moved to this point here. Let's go ahead and close the camera map editor for a second and we'll move the actual Cinema 4D timeline. You'll see it is moving through 3D space similar to how it was moving in the real world. Now that's great if we can't get a good track in Mocha, but if we can get a good track like we did in this case, we can actually make it match perfectly with how it moved in the real world. We'll do that by just going back to frame one here. And instead of animating it, let's go ahead and clear out these keyframes by clicking on this button here. Yes, delete all the keyframes for the selected layers. Okay. Now let's go ahead and move this back to the movie screen by clicking on this button. And this time we're going to take our track that we have stored in slot number one. We're going to select it here, hand track. The next we're going to click on this little track icon here, which says assign track to selected layers. Now our track has been assigned to our hand roto layer. Now we get a choice of the type of solver we're going to use. In this case, it's the non-perspective 2.5D solver. If we try to click on this and use the 3D solver, it's going to tell us we haven't solved it yet. So let's go back to the 2.5D solver. And then we're going to click on this link button. What that's going to do is tell Mocha Blend on frame one, we want our roto layer right in this position on the movie screen. And then from that point on, we want it to move following the tracking data. So let's go ahead and click on the link button and you'll see we get a yellow indicator to tell us what frame we linked it on. And also our timeline is now turned purple to tell you that you are linked to tracking data. So if we click on play at this point, you'll see our hand layer is moving a little less smoothly because now it is actually following the tracking data from Mocha. So let's pause it and click on update modified. Now let's close our camera map editor. And scrub the timeline. Now it's moving through 3D space, but now it's not doing it artificially with keyframes. It's actually moving the way the hand did in the real world. We got an excellent track in Mocha on this, and you can see our hand is moving just the way the hand did physically in the real world. So if you want to interact with anything here, simulations, objects, uh, maybe push things around or move it through a medium like glass or water or something. You can see we have textured geometry moving in 3D space just like it did when it was filmed. Now what if we want to add some depth to our spline here? Well, MocoBlend gives you two ways to do that. One is to create hidden depth. What this does is use your camera lens setting to hide the extrusion so you won't be able to see anything. It will look just like the original footage. The other way is to select layer rotation. 
That means if you rotate your hand into a different orientation here, you will see the edges of the extrusion. By default, Local Blend selects hidden as the extrusion type. So let's go ahead and quickly make a depth change to our layer. You hear right now it has zero depth. We can see our layer better actually if we turn on constant shading. There we go. Now let's go ahead and open up the camera map editor again and take a look at how we add some depth. We have two ways to do that. One is simply to click on this button here and assign an extrusion depth. We'll give it uh, 50 pixels and click on Update Modified. And you'll see we now have a depth to our spline. Now when viewed through the camera, that extrusion depth is invisible. It still lines up perfectly with our original footage. Now, if you want to adjust depth in the uh, layer view here, so you can align multiple layers, in this case we only have one, sometimes you want to see how much depth you have versus other layers. So all we do is click on, on Windows the Alt key and drag around in here and we can adjust our depth manually. So if we had another layer right here, we would just adjust it until it's right at that point. In this case, let's just drag it out a little further so we can see it better. Click on Update Modified, and you'll see our depth has been modified. Now we'll take a look at this feature in a later tutorial when we do the woman running through the smoke wall. In that case, we have many layers we need to align, and this feature comes in very handy for that. The last thing we're going to cover is how to rotate our spline using the camera map editor. Now, Mokoblin gives you a couple ways of doing this. We can manually set the X and Y rotation. And quickly before we do, I want to explain that there is no Z rotation here, because if you think about it, we can go ahead and drag this down and look at our footage here. Z rotation is around this direction inside the footage. So if we move through our timeline, any Z rotation is going to be actually controlled by the shape of your spline from what you've done in Mocha. So let's go ahead and drop this back down again. And we'll go ahead and set some rotation. We'll manually set an X value of minus 45. And let's go ahead and set a Y value of, let's say, 45. Now you'll see our values pop up here. So you see we have a, an extrusion of 185, minus 45 on the X, and 45 on the Y. So let's click on Update Modified, and you should see our spline layer match those values. We can't really see it from this angle. Let's move over here. And also our extrusion is a little out of control here at 185. So let's go ahead and drag that down to something a little more reasonable, something you might use in the real world like 30, and update it one more time. And you'll see our spline has been rotated just the way we set it in the camera map editor. Now again, it looks a little distorted, but if you view it through the lens, you'll see it matches up perfectly with the original footage. Now setting it manually like this is not always the easiest way when you want to match things already in your viewport. So let's go ahead and actually clear these out. We'll just go to zero and zero, and we'll update it. Now, if we want to interactively set it, what we do is click on this visibility button here. It says toggle display of rotation nulls for selected layers. And you'll see now we get a controller. We can go ahead and set our rotation manually here in the 3D viewport. And then just click on update selected. You'll see our rotation values will update to match. And then our spline will match that target. We can turn off the visibility of that once we're done with it. And this gives us an easy way to interactively set it when we're trying to match it to other objects in our scene.